This video brought to you by Coldest Water. On their website, you can purchase bottles of different volumes that will keep your cold water cold for 36 whole hours. Perfect for keeping you cool during the hottest months of the year. These bottles are easy to carry, but also durable with a non-leak screw cap in case you drop them. They also have coolers, ice packs, and even coffee beans. And for those of you living in countries where summer starts in December, they also ship internationally. Click the affiliate link below in the description and use the code NR10 to get 10% off your entire order. Imagine if Star Fox fused with Waterworld, a planet mostly covered in water and groups of people are fighting each other over territory and supplies by sea and by air. But instead of our wings, you're piloting giant warbirds. Okay, it's a bit of a stretch, but it's one way of describing this indie game released on PCs in 2020 and now released as the Enhanced Warrior Edition on the Switch. This is the Falconeer Warrior Edition for the Nintendo Switch. There's actually a lot to this detailed story that gets explored through cutscenes and mission dialogue. But to summarize, it's a story, as I said, about different factions fighting each other for territory and supplies across this vast planet-wide ocean. And no matter what character you choose, you're also playing as someone called a falconeer. You pilot your warbird and take on jobs for your faction to save civilians, trade with suppliers, and destroy other factions. It's an interesting mix of sci-fi and fantasy that you'll really have to pay attention to in order to fully understand because it is rather easy to get lost in the story sometimes. Before getting into the graphics, it's important to note that this game was developed by one person, much like other indie games I've covered such as Freeze Me and Pumpkin Jack. So if this was something made by a huge, big budget team, it would be far less impressive with its rather drab colors and lack of detail in a lot of enemies. But considering this was done by one person, it's actually a very impressive piece of work. The lone developer Thomas Sala was able to get some great motions and animations in the ocean and the warbirds in an open world not bogged down by cuts and load times as well as realistic weather and really good lighting effects. Falconeer also uses a distinct cel-shaded art style for the characters that only show their faces, much like Star Fox games. It's actually a good thing, because it gives the characters more life where their stiff motions alone would have made them seem wooden. Again, considering this is the work of one person, the visual presentation is actually really impressive. The sound design is pretty impressive for the most part. The sound effects are decent, but what I really want to talk about is the music and voice acting. With the voice acting, some of it sounds like good and serious acting, but a lot of it also sounds cheesy, and I'm not sure how much of the cheesiness was intentional. Like the characters talking here are really trying too hard to be dramatic, or they're going for more of a cartoony approach on purpose. Return with whatever stolen goods it carries, and we'll have a toast. With some of the best crumb upon your return. I don't know, you decide. The music was composed by Benedict Nichols, so it's the only thing made by someone else as far as I know. The music is pretty good. While there aren't a whole lot of different tracks, each one fits the mood of the situation. When you're flying around the open world, the music is very subtle, if it's there at all, so you can just take in the atmosphere. During the combat, the music is more fast-paced and exciting in a dark, dramatic sense. It works really well to make combat more fun. Finally, the scenes that dig into more of the world's lore use tracks similar to other fantasy films like Lord of the Rings. Overall, nice job by Mr. Nichols. Good work, Mac. The main thing to do in Falconeer is engage in aerial dogfights. It's really where the game shines with its concept. Not only can you fly around with a giant falcon and blast lasers at your enemies, but as you level up, you can also fly with a dragon or even a pterodactyl, and your enemies will use all kinds of creatures even if they don't make sense for flying, like manta rays or giant eels. It's a great way for the game to use its sci-fi and fantasy mix. Combat has a pretty good targeting system and a few different weapons to use for blasting warbirds out of the sky or bombing ships and turret placements. You can even barrel roll with your warbird. So there's plenty to get excited about when it comes to combat, except for when certain enemy warbirds fly circles around you, so you end up flying in a circle until you can get a shot off. Sure, this happens in Star Fox 2, but not quite so frequently to the point where it felt ridiculous. The other thing is the controls. They work well for the most part, but there were a few times where I would start drifting upwards or to the side with no control of my own. Also, the boost was effective for getting places faster, but even without using the boost, just flying normal speed, it was hard to slow down to get a better attack position, so I would end up crashing into rocks or enemy ships. Back to the missions, they boil down to these types. Combat, training, delivering a package, or escorting a ship. You would do these missions as both story and side missions. A good open world also has optional side missions, and fortunately this one does too. While they of course don't advance the story, they, along with the story missions, earn you some good XP and money that helps you level up to improve your stats or get a new warbird. 
Like many RPGs, you use the money to buy supplies to make your warbird stronger. This means more ammo, different ammo types, potions to improve your warbird's regenerative powers, or different cannons. And some of these cannons were fun to play around with. As much as I love my rapid fire lasers, shooting lightning bolts and globs of acid was also a lot of fun and it felt unique. Speaking of uniqueness with ammo, the way you reload is unique as well. You do so by flying through thunderclouds and absorbing the lightning, something I really haven't seen anywhere else. But as great as all of this sounds, the game still has its nagging flaws. For one thing, this is an open world game with not much in it. I understand that part of the appeal is supposed to be the atmosphere of the ocean and the sky above it that you're flying through, but after a while you want to hurry up and get to some dogfighting. To be fair, there is an occasional option to hold A to fly ahead and warp to your next objective, but that doesn't solve the problem of escort missions. These really bring the fun pace to a screeching halt. See, your warbird is fast and these ships you're escorting are slow, so you end up just flying donuts in the sky above the ship as you wait for it to reach its destination. And from time to time, enemy warbirds might attack on your path, so you have to be ready to defend the ship. This doesn't happen often though, so most of the time you're left with a snail's pace mission assignment. And some side missions are just escorting ships. It got to the point where I'd be playing the story and cry out in annoyance, Oh great, another escort mission. This game should have had way less of these missions, or at least make the ships go faster. But even with that said, the missions as a whole did start to feel repetitive after a while. Only occasionally do they throw something at you to really make a mission feel different from others of its type. Also, there were a few times where the game wouldn't tell you how to do an action, or the objective marker would be somewhere where there's nothing but water, but it's telling you to destroy ground defenses or something. So you just end up wandering around for a while like an idiot until you give up and look for a side mission to do. Apparently a glitch is partially to blame for this. If that's the case, it needs to be fixed. The game is currently available for $30 on the eShop, which is honestly too much given the issues it has. It would be better going for $15 or $20, so if you like games with aerial combat and complex storylines, I'd say get it, but get it on a good sale, $20 or less. And that's my review of the Falconeer Warrior Edition for the Nintendo Switch. If you liked this review, check out my previous reviews of Crash Drive 3 for the Switch and Star Fox Zero for the Wii U. See you all next time! The deed is done! Never before has this bolt been reached. Until now, when free men stood up to claim their jewels.